I'm back. Here we are again. Another review, another day. Well, actually, it's the same day. I do usually do a number of them at the same time. Now, some people have accused me wrongfully uh, of being anti uh, Far East or anti this or anti that. And, uh, first thing I'd say to that is, well, I have an Ibanez. They made in the Far East. And, you know, I've had other guitars also made in the Far East. And today, what I want to do is to review one of the better ones that's made in the Far East, as opposed to some of that rubbish that we've uh, talked about on other uh, videos that I've, I've done. Uh, this is a guitar that's actually made in Korea. And uh, I'm quite pleased to be able to present it today because it's been loaned to me to be presented, which, uh, which is nice. I don't have to buy it. Uh, but it don't make no difference to me because if I find it's crap, I'll be telling you it's crap, but I've already looked at this one, so unfortunately, on this occasion, it's highly likely to be better than what you might think. It was for me. Yeah, so this one was loaned to me, like I said, and uh, if you want to find out more about Michael Kelly Guitars, well, you can actually go to michaelkellyguitars.com. Or you can go to uh, the UK distributors, rosetti.co.uk, and uh, or Rosetti as a company, and uh, they've got all the series on. But the point is, what we're going to do with this guitar is we're going to get down and have a nice close look at it. See what separates a guitar like this quality uh, from uh, what the other stuff is all about. You know, the real cheap and nasty stuff and the the really horrible guitars that I, personally I would never buy. Uh, this is a different level of the guitar than some of those that I've spoken about in the past. So, yeah, it's an interesting subject and it's definitely worth uh, taking a closer look. It's very affordable too. I think in the UK it's, uh, it's about £559 with the VAT. You might get it cheaper from your dealer or whatever. Who knows? Uh, I haven't bought one. I've had this one loaned, as I said. Uh, but uh, yeah, looks cool. Real wood too, <laughs> which makes a surprising change uh, for some of the cheaper guitars. But this isn't that cheap, but uh, yeah, looks good. Load of features. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in close, take, take that close up and uh, personal view as I've done on some of my own guitars, so you can get a good feel of this one too. And then uh, later in the video, we're going to go and play it. And uh, maybe I'll put uh, somewhere there uh, the point where you play, <laughs> or I play, <laughs> uh, so you can get a good uh, idea of how it sounds. Anyway, no more to do. Let's zoom down. Let's take a nice close look at this guitar and look at all the features and benefits and maybe not so good features. Who knows? I haven't really looked at every last screw. But <laughs> well, no doubt we will. Here goes. Well, here we are. A nice close-up of the Michael Kelly 1955-1950 series uh, guitar. Yeah, this uh, top here that you see, this is a real maple top. And uh, if you have a look at the side here, you can just about see. Well, that's actually real maple. So you've got a, a slab on there that's at least... Uh, I would say that's about three eighths of an inch thick, which is nice, very nice for a telecaster to see like that. And what you've got on the back of this thing, although it's just sort of dark at the back, is you've got uh, swamp ash. So you've got swamp ash and figure maple, which I like. I like that combination. They work uh, really well, and they work really well, especially with humbuckers, which this guitar has. So while this guitar isn't a telecaster. It looks a bit like a Telecaster, but it isn't a Telecaster. What it is, it's like, uh, it's a guitar that they say has been inspired by the best boutique builders in the world. So expect something a little bit different than just a plain old Telecaster. And there are a lot of features that are not immediately obvious just by looking at this, uh, such as pull switches and things like that, which we'll come on to a little bit later uh, when we play. So, overall, it's a, it's a really well-made, I have to say, a really well-made guitar uh, on the body. The electronics don't look too uh, shabby either. You've got really thick uh, 
a thick plate, whereas a lot of the usual bottom end stuff, which this isn't a bottom end, but the usual bottom end stuff's really nasty and thin. I like this too, this is a pretty thick uh, uh, bridge. And it isn't an exact Telecaster copy either, if you look at that. Uh, maybe like some of the more modern ones, but uh, certainly not like the old one where you couldn't, uh, you couldn't uh, actually uh, get in tune properly uh, with the intonation, that is. By the way, I like the colour of this one. Uh, this one's called uh, Caramel Burst. And it sort of is nice and uh, reminds me of a, a sort of old sort of violin style of colouring, really. Uh, like a sunburst that's aged a bit, for want of a better word. You can also get it in transamber, which is more like, uh, you know, a sort of yellowy top. And uh, what they call a, a black wash, which is like a see-through black. Uh, those are the three colours that you can uh, sort of get the body in. And by the way, once you change from this uh, finish, you no longer get the rosewood on the neck. So the other two, the amber and the black, have a have a fully maple neck, where this is maple backed and rosewood topped. And it really is rosewood, so there's no all that uh, make up a board mode <laughs> that you get on some guitars and some brands. And what you do get is you get uh, on these pickups. These are Rockford pickups, if you ever heard of them. And uh, this one at the front here is an SWC humbucker. And the one at the back is like a mini humbucker. And now you can split either of these into uh, single coil or have them as humbucker. And it's like that. It's as easy as that. Okay. So you can have one split and one not, or any combination. This is a three way switch. One, two, three. So you don't get the in between stuff that you might think you can get. Uh, you know, what more can I say about that? Three. And don't forget with these pickups, uh, you can actually whiz out on the internet and do your own research on Rockford pickups, and uh, that's all good stuff as well. Uh, the mini humbucker to me is that that's like a reminiscent uh, of the old Gibson mini humbucker that the guy and thing was used to play, I guess. Uh, although it's obviously not exactly the same, it's the same genre. So let's move a bit further down the guitar and have a look down that way at the neck, the fretboard and the rest of it, where it matters. Like I've already said, it's a rosewood uh, board. Looks to me about a uh, quarter of an inch thick, so it's a reasonably thick board. It's, it's radiused, as they are. <laughs> so these fret ends have all been finished carefully. And the other thing I like is the if you actually look at these, these are really well uh, fitted, you know, and some of the some of the junky stuff you see around, there's all filler around them and all sorts of stuff. But these ones are in there, pretty good. Uh, they're probably plastic on this model, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. They do the job. Most importantly, though, is this finishing of the fret ends. Here we are at the nut. Now this is a real bone nut, uh, which I like. Uh, rather than the plastic things. If you ever, anybody's ever seen that uh, that counterfeit Les Paul that went through on one of the videos, uh, you'll remember how bad the nut was, and you were paying hundreds and hundreds of pounds for that thing. Uh, if you look at this, this is the way it should really be done. And if we just uh, slide this back a little bit, if we can, I don't want to teach you any particularly too much. You can see it's been cut right. I hope you can anyway. That's what matters. A decent job, not this rubbish that you get on these other products, these, uh, you know, the counterfeits and all the bottom end rubbish. This has been done right. Now looking at the headstock, it isn't a Telecaster headstock shape, that doesn't really matter because it's not a Telecaster. It's not meant to be a Telecaster, it's meant to be like a boutique style of guitar, which I think it works quite well as that. You'll see round the headstock that this veneer, is exactly that. This isn't the uh, high quality quarter of an inch thick wood, but it doesn't need to be. You can see where it's carved away here, so you can actually see the thickness of the uh, veneer. It's very, very thin. It still looks nice though. You can feel the, uh, the uh, logo on there. All nice. It's like a matte finish, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Because it's a 50s sort of copy type of, 
Oh, not a copy, but an emulator, let's call it that. You get these type of string trees. Now, I'm not too keen on this type of string tree. I have to be honest. I think they're a little bit, a uh, bit of aggro. They'd be even more aggro if this thing had got a tremolo, but it doesn't have so. Maybe you'd get away with it a bit better on this one. We shall see a bit later. Yes, and you do actually get the tool for adjusting the truss rod uh, that fits in there very nicely. Let's whiz around the back. Okay, well, let's talk machine heads. Because in this case, although they're MKs, they're not MKs, they're actually Grover. And uh, they come with a lifetime guarantee, these things. So they should be good. They look good. They feel right. There's none of the flopping around that you get. Uh, on all of the very cheap stuff uh, these seem really cool and uh, especially cool on a guitar of this price uh, because these things matter don't they yeah Grover it says here should your Grover tuners ever fail for any reason simply return them to us for a fast friendly no charge repair or replacement how good's that yeah can't say more can you and neither can I by the way the chrome uh, as is the rest of the uh, guitar. It's all chromed and it's uh, it's nice thick plating too. Okay, well the other thing I like about this neck, if you look at it, you can see there's no scarf joint part way down the neck. I remember looking at that cheap Chinese thing and there was a big fat scarf joint there. But it was on a guitar that's not supposed to have one, so <laughs> it's all exciting stuff. It's, uh, it's decent maple. And it, it's got one of those narrow, it's like a, a thinner type of fender neck, fender style neck for the feel, you know. Uh, and, it's, and it's a compound radius, 10.5 uh, inch to 16 inches, so you won't get that choking off uh, when you do all them bends, you know, on the neck at the other side. Uh, it's all good. It's a 22 fret neck, by the way. I forgot to mention that, but uh, that's what it is. All nice. Let's move down a bit. Now, there's nothing special about that neck joint. It looks uh, sort of fendery to me. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that, but it is. Uh, it's a four. It's a four bolt bolt on neck with its regular type of uh, neck plate, and I guess you could, if you want to tart it up a bit, you could change that and have your little pants on or whatever you want to do. Not much more to say. Looks a tight fit in the neck, though. in the neck pocket. Does the neck. Uh, which is what I always like to see, really. Yeah, that looks a pretty good fit. Let's look at the body. And once again, you've got that sort of 50 sort of Telecaster uh, styling with the way the strings uh, put through the body. But apart from that, uh, it's not really very Telecaster at all, because, oh, you've got my lights there, fancy that. <laughs> if you notice that, you've actually got a big fat groove this side. Uh, so you get that tummy cut that you wouldn't always, uh, well you definitely wouldn't get on uh, a, a Telecaster for example and uh, you know some of the Telecasters I've made myself have the tummy cut and uh, that makes a lot of difference uh, whereas this style of guitar is concerned, it does to me at least. As I said on the back of the body it's, uh, it's painted in a sort of darkish sort of colour as you can see, you don't really see much of the wood. Uh, but the top finish is awesome, and uh, I can't feel any anything uh, with this at all. Where you, you sometimes, if you get joins in the body in the wood, you'll feel where the, you, know, you know the finish sinks in. There's not a lot on this guitar, and that's always a good sign. Let's go back further around. Guitar's got a, a regular type of uh, jack plate. Good to see that it's metal. Some of them I've seen have been plastic, but th this guitar's got metal ones, which is pretty solid to me. So here's a top view of the actual thickness of the maple. And you can see the maple figuring. If you actually look all the way around this, uh, you can see it coming through the side. So you know it's the real deal. And it's been masked off pretty nice as well. Uh, when I look at an area like this, you go and check my videos and you'll see PRS guitars, uh, which I own, uh, and I have a number of them, uh, all the way through to private stock, and you can see around these edges where it's been masked off that they've done a pretty poor job. On this guitar, you can actually see that they've done a pretty good job. Let me back out a little bit and uh, you get more of an idea right the way across the guitar. 
can see that the masking's been done pretty well. Uh, as I said, compared to some of those very expensive guitars that I've got. Uh, so in that case, in this case, should I say, uh, they win. So okay, so everybody wants to know about the model of this. This one's uh, actually a 24 MK 1955 CB. So there. <laughs> Just in case you wanted to find one. These were uh, a new model that uh, Michael Kelly made in 2014. So all good so far. Let's take a look underneath this plate. Yeah, one of the reasons I want to take a look underneath this plate is this. See the side plate? Let's take that off. You can see there's a lot of side plate. Or at least there is to me. Now it might be perfectly operational, but uh, it's just something I wanted to check. Or we will have a closer look. Well, what do you get? What you get is really what I'd expect to see on this price range guitar, really. Uh, even if you was to take uh, some better known brands like Ibanez even, uh, particularly the mid-price stuff. And uh, this is a sort of low to mid-price guitar, so, you know, you get reasonable electronics. I wouldn't say that these switches are perfect, but they don't seem to be too bad. Even though there's a bit of play on this, it's still perfectly functional and you know the soldering is pretty reasonable and stuff like that so I just wanted to flip that out just to show you the sort of quality that you do get it's not bad quality it's just what you'd expect actually as I said from a guitar in this price range so it's not a really a criticism it's just a fact of life that's what you get it's going to stand up to the uh, riggers I guess and if it doesn't I'm sure the distributors or the dealer or whoever will solve it for you it's that simple really but it's no big deal if you want to switch one of these out for one of the other style which you know about as i do you can do that uh, of course it would then invalidate your warranty but what do you want blood <laughs> let's put it back so there's another view of the uh, michael kelly 1955 similar to a telecaster guitar not bad. So, there you have an overview of the Michael Kelly 1955 model guitar. Not bad, especially for the money. I think that's the thing. By the way, it even comes with uh, Diodario XLs in it. Yeah, it doesn't say which uh, what the strung has, whether they tens or nines or whatever. But uh, they feel a bit like tens to me. But they could be nines. And you've got that Grover warranty. I like that too. Yeah, yeah. Them are the sort of things you really want. You don't want to, you don't want to be faffing around with junk when you've got the good stuff, especially for this price. To me, it's awesome. <laughs> well, we're going to listen to it in a minute. Well, actually, it's that way. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's that way. <laughs> I always do that. But don't worry. Shh. We mustn't tell anybody. Now between when I last spoke about, oh, what's it sound like and now, actually, I have actually played this. Uh, so don't think I'm just sitting here just doing nothing. No, I have actually been and done it and had a go and yeah, all that stuff, which you're going to see over there. <laughs> Shouldn't do that. But what's the overall conclusions of this guitar? It's a made in Korea guitar. You know, I'm not a fanatic of uh, Far Eastern guitars, but uh, actually, I got a few, but they tend to be from Japan, not China or these other places. As I said, this is Korea, but it's quite surprising uh, what quality they've got this this particular guitar up to. It's a reasonable price. It's about uh, I can't tell you about the American price, but it's an equivalent to about eight hundred and twenty eight hundred and twenty dollars or five hundred and fifty nine pounds. 54 something like that step within a few quid quid that's a great one so if you think about it you're getting a lot for a little i think you are anyway because of the woods straight up uh, most of these things that i see they, honestly the no comparison to this guitar i like this as well yeah i like the being able to to do that yeah i like the humbuckers i like this particular one because normally on a telecaster you get 
Telecaster style. You get uh, a massive variance between the, uh, the bridge and the neck pickup. Uh, it's a fact of life, so on the guitars that I made, uh, on one of them I did something about that, and on another one I used different pickups that compensated for that difference in volume. It's, a, it's awful. <laughs> Some people must like it, but it wasn't for me. On this case, uh, this is a much better situation because you've got control over what you want to do with those uh, sounds. You can have it weak if you want to have it weak, pulled out, or you can have it powerful if you push it in. I think that's great. I like the overall build quality, like I said. I like the fact of the finish, flawless finish, which is unusual uh, for a lot of those uh, cheaper guitars. Now, Michael Kelly might be a very well-known brand to you. It isn't a very well-known brand to me. And I think part of the reason for that is because I've never heard of Michael Kelly. But obviously they've been around. They've been around a long time, actually, according to the website. So it may be just me. <laughs> it probably is. Uh, so uh, would I have gone and looked at one or bought one? or No, I wouldn't have. Uh, but hopefully this video will help to make you change your mind and go at least have a look at it because I think it's worth having a look at because it is finished really, really well. It is. And uh, So what would I give it as a, a score? Bear in mind I've heard it and you haven't, but you will. Well, I'd give this one about... Uh, I'd give it about an 8. And the reason it's, it's laid back from 10 uh, really is this electronics type of stuff. I mean, it's not bad. Don't get me wrong. It's 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 fully workable. It, it's going to do the job. But I always try and think very long term me. Uh, I don't want to do it for a job for a year or 15 months or 18 months. I want this guitar for 10 years or 20 years even. Now, it's no big deal to go and change the necessary bits if you want to do that. Or even you could change the pickups if you want to do that. Uh, but there's not really a lot wrong with these, but uh, it depends what you want to do. Uh, if I was to buy this and keep it for the longer term, personally, I would work on that switch straight straight away, personally. But you may not do that because of warranties and stuff like that. So an 8 out of 10, it's a pretty fair score, really. Uh, it's not been uh, overly uh, critical, and it's not been, you know... Oh, it's a cheap guitar. Critical. It's, uh, it's quite good for what it is. And I, uh, I don't mind uh, actually saying that, really. Career or not. <laughs> so some of them guys that said, Oh, yeah, he's always buying them top-end guitars. He doesn't this and he does... You're wrong. You always were wrong, because the main guitar that I play is a guitar that I bought for 350 quid, <laughs> second-hand from America. So I don't know where them guys come from. Uh, Another thing is it doesn't come with a case, or it doesn't appear to come with a case. Uh, it didn't come with one to me. It might have one, but I don't think so. <laughs> so you need a case uh, for it, and uh, because of its shape, I guess you'll be able to get a case pretty easy. Uh, whether it's a cloth one or a real deal, it doesn't make much difference. Apart from that, well, that's near enough the end. I've just got... Uh, I want to thank Rosetti, by the way, for, for lending me this. Because uh, people don't have to lend me anything. I have to go and buy them. And I, I buy nearly every, nearly everything, not everything, but nearly everything that, that I review. And, uh, you yeah, know, it costs a lot of money to do. Uh, so in this case, uh, I'm grateful for that, that uh, somebody should lend it me. And, by the way, uh, you know, they said, oh, yeah, you, you, you say what you want about it, Tony. And I, I think that also means they've got a bit of faith in the products they sell. Uh, this one came set up by Rosetti, because they set them up before they send them out. And... Uh, it's set up nigh on perfect. It's great. <laughs> I didn't have to do anything. I get bored sometimes. <laughs> now, if you want to go and see Rosetti, uh, it's rosetti.co.uk. Somewhere there. You got it? And you'll know mine. Uh, go to my website, www.tonymackenzie.com, uh, where you can see loads of other reviews. Or you go to my YouTube, where it's www.youtube.com slash Mackenzie com with no dot and that about sums up how you're going to find me really and uh, how you're going to find Rosetti and don't forget if you want to find out more about uh, Michael Kelly guitars 
well, go to michaelkellyguitars.com. That's the easy answer, uh, which will get you past that. So the plane's coming up now. I don't want to bore you anymore. I just want to say thanks for you watching it so far. Uh, and I hope you like the, uh, the tones from it. I might use even that Mesa Boogie uh, uh, clone, cab clone or whatever they call it. I don't know what they call it. I call it expensive. <laughs> but uh, I may not, but ultimately you're going to hear the sound of the guitar of what it can do uh, out there in my studio. So thanks for watching. Rock and roll. See you next time.